Right, the pre-construction agreement puts a lot of power back in the owner's hands. So we're really being truly transparent with them, making them part of the process. But the other side of a pre-construction agreement is that it gets the job off the street, yeah. right? And so they may, they may not have nefarious intent, they just don't know any better. And that's the purpose of these videos. It's the purpose why I do what I do, because there's so much misinformation in this field, and there's so much game that contractors need to learn to step their game up to provide better value and service to their, their customers, which in turn is gonna benefit them massively. People buy results, problem, solution, result, and people are buying what they want. Yep. Build a schedule, have milestones so we, they don't know, we know when the payment should be come out. Correct. So there's no just coming out of the blue, hey, you owe me 10 grand today. Yeah, because a lot of these projects, it's a great point, because a lot of these projects are not bank draws. Right, so they're coming directly from cash. From the owner. From the owner, right? And so it'd be nice to give them a heads up that you're gonna hit them over the head for 25,000. Right. Right, and so the way we do it is we bake in payment milestones in the schedule so they get a baseline schedule when they contract and they know when they're supposed to be paying us so that at least they can coordinate themselves and their affairs appropriately so they have the money freed up to pay us at that time. What that also does is it forces us to stay on schedule. Right. right, because they know they got to pay you in January, and then if they if you ask for payment in March, that's an admission of two months of delay. Right, right. So unless you have excusable delay, you wrote them a notice of delay for a particular reason, or they gave you a change order that added time. Otherwise, that's on you. Right, right. You're gonna hear it. So the pre-construction agreement is like the gift that keeps on giving. It's the golden ticket. The contractor is not going there educating their client and advocating for themselves. Most contractors aren't great communicators anyway, right? So then, you know, you can't get blood from a rock. You expect these guys to give an eloquent advocation for their position and educate them? I, I doubt, I, I don't think so. They, they definitely can't, you know, yeah. it's, it's a lot of work. You need people. You need people. You can't do this by yourself. And, and a lot of times that's a difference in price. The cheapest guy doesn't have management. Right. The guy who's a little bit higher, he's got a project manager. Right, because he has people and he's got, he's got a greater overhead carry than the guy who doesn't have people, who owns the business and is swinging the hammer. It goes people first. Income second. Exactly. It's not the other way around. Uh, once I do a couple of these jobs, I'll get some money, then I can get someone. That's gonna lead to a day that never comes. You gotta get the person, put a butt in a chair, and then that pressure is gonna force you to go out and get the work. You need the people first, and then the work comes second. You backfill the people with the work, not the other way around. Oh, you're great. Hey, Brian, how's it going? Good, how are you, Marshall? Good, uh, thanks for having me back. Glad to be back here. Thanks for coming. You bet, we're embedded for another week right before Thanksgiving. That's how hardcore we get, right? That's right. Okay, so our interview last time was, was good and well-received, and I was happy to have you on. And I know that uh, based on the feedback that I got, there were quite a few contractors that reached out to me and thanked me for doing the interview and said it was beneficial and inspiring in many cases. Right. So, uh, so what I want to talk to you about uh, tonight, we just got off a of contractor school mm -hmm. and we talked about pre-construction agreements. Right. And what I want to talk to you about is pre-construction agreements. I know you're using them. Mm -hmm. um, I know I put you onto that. Explain to me Pre-construction agreements, how you got onto it, and how it's benefited you. Okay, so we, we started the pre-construction agreements about a year ago. Yeah. Um, it was presented to me by you. Yeah. And um, we, we, in, we implemented that because we understand that our customers really doesn't understand construction. So we felt that it was the safest way for our customers to feel comfortable with us. So we put them in a pre-construction agreement. We hold their hands throughout the entire process. So what we do is we go ahead and we bring our architects in. Our customer can deal with our architects hand, hand in hand with our project managers, with our designers. So what's happening is they're actually creating their own project in a sense. So they're taking their graphical representation that's in their mind and having the architect put it on a piece of paper. And they're actually building the budget with us. So we're not telling them, you know, if we give them a budget of, let's say, 200000 but in, in essence, they're the ones who are building the budget with us. So through the architect, through our PMs, through how we get our subs in line, that's how we create that budget for them. 
So we find that they're very safe. They feel like they're very safe. They're, their hands being held throughout the whole thing. Because in, in reality, the customer has never done this process before. The majority of them don't even know what to expect. So that's how we got into this thing, and, uh, and it's been working well. You know, it's put $12 million in our account with these pre-construction agreements. So, yeah, it's, it's worked quite well. Right. The pre-construction agreement puts a lot of power back in the owner's hands. It does. Because they're, you're working with them throughout the entire process the design process, working with the architect, being a liaison. And where you come into play is you're the liaison between them and the architect, and you chime in as it relates to constructability of the drawings, procurement lead times, mm -hmm. and you help facilitate the choices of material and where to go. So they're in control of the material portion. So if they want a gold plated toilet seat, they can get a gold plated toilet seat, right? right? We, know, we know where to buy it. We know where to go, and they could choose it, and they know what the price is. They see that it's not being marked up. They know exactly what that cost is going to be, mm -hmm. and so they could factor that in to their material decisions. Right. So we're really being truly transparent with them, making them part of the process. Mm -hmm. But the other side of a pre-construction agreement is that it gets the job off the street. Right. So they're calling people. They're calling contractors to come in, and they're looking for an estimate, and every guy is going to come in there whose desk is his dashboard. He's going to say, okay, uh, you know, it's going to be X, Y, Z. Right. Meanwhile, there are no drawings. There's no graphical representation of what the owner wants. They had no say in the materials, per se, at that point, mm -hmm. but they got a price. And they signed a contract to a fictitious number. Yeah, they signed a contract yeah. to a guy who they hope had a crystal ball, I guess. Exactly, right. Doesn't make much sense. No, and, and it happens all the time. It's, it's ironic how customers will sign a contract without having a set of drawings. It's, 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 I can't even understand why they would do something like that. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. You don't, you don't even get a graphical representation of what's in your mind. So what am I going to build? What's in my mind or what's in your mind? Right. So at least you get to see on paper. We could give them a rendering. You know, we have those beautiful renderings. Right. Right. And we could give them a rendering, and it looks like a photograph. Mm -hmm. So they get an actual eye view of what it's supposed to look like. In this way, I know what I'm supposed to build, right. and I know exactly how to take that off and price it so they get an accurate price. Exactly. That's exactly how it should work, and it does work that way. And a lot of these other contracts go in there just throwing a dart at a dartboard. Yeah. So they're really, and, and, and I know what they're doing is they're going in, they're getting the customer to sign a contract, and then they're power flipping on them, mm -hmm. you know, meaning... As soon as that customer signs the contract, the power flips back to the contractor. Correct. So now everything that they thought they were getting is now being change ordered to get what they actually want. Right. Oh, I didn't know you wanted granite countertops. I didn't know you want this type of tile. Right. You know, and, and that's what the scary thing is. These, and then the customers will, I, I, I see customers all the time that have nightmare stories. Absolutely. About how they've just, you know, they escalated 50000 in a project because they never had a drawing up front. Yeah. There wasn't a clarity in what exactly was going to be built. It's very foggy. Yeah, it's very foggy, and it's foggy towards the contractor's favor. Right. And, and you know, unfortunately, that's what goes on in our business, especially on the residential end. In the commercial end, you got engineer drawings right. with specs. It's a different animal. But on the residential side, even if it's not a custom home build, even if it's a four or $500,000 renovation with an addition, they're putting in a new kitchen, they're doing a couple of new bathrooms, you're knocking down some walls and putting in some closets, you're putting an addition for another bedroom or something, you know, they're not putting $2 million down for a custom home build, but they're spending their life savings and, right. and what they've got in order to put it into their home so they could maybe fit it for wheelchair access, et cetera, as they get older. Right. And they're going to be taken advantage of. And yeah, and whether it's going to be done consciously or unconsciously due to contractors that are not sophisticated, that don't know about this process, don't have the means to even do this process. That's right. Yeah. Right. And so they may they may not have nefarious intent. They just don't know any better. Right. And that's the purpose of these videos. It's the purpose why I do what I do, because there's so much misinformation in this field and there's so much game that contractors need to learn to step their game up to provide better value and service to their, their customers, which in turn is going to benefit them massively. Right. Like you said earlier, the pre-construction agreements have added $12 million to your business. Right. Right? You weren't doing them before. No. Now your customers are happier, mm -hmm. they're more involved in the process, and you're able to get a job off the street 
before another contractor could come in, cut your legs out from underneath of you with a super low price and have the customer focused on price, not competency, and then a customer gets change ordered to death and then hates every contractor they ever meet there going forward, right? Yeah. yeah. Not working off a schedule. These contractors, they have no idea. How can they build a schedule? They don't have a plan. Yeah, they have no plan. They have no plan, so they have they have no idea well, what the schedule is. Well, don't forget the back like. of a napkin. Yeah, well, yeah. You could put a schedule on the back of a Dunkin' Donuts napkin, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's it's unfortunate, right? So we use Builder Trend software. We use Monday.com. We have technology that helps with all that, yeah. Correct. We're airtight on these jobs. That's right. We know exactly where we stand in real time, mm-hmm. where we are in the job, what our committed costs are, what our actual committed costs are, right? Right? Then, based on that, we could figure out exactly what our gross clear is, and we could get a percentage of profit, and we watch that threshold. Like a hawk. Like a hawk. Yeah. Because it's a business. It's a business. Right. Exactly. So, we're, we're creating an environment to buy. We're creating an environment for people to do business with us where they're very comfortable. They want to continue to do business with us. They trust us. They know we have the altitude. We're with them every step of the way. We hold their hand. We're like a warm blanket. Right. right, and we deliver exactly what they want. And at the end of the day, that's what they're buying. People buy results, problem, solution, result, mm-hmm. and people are buying what they want. They want a new kitchen, they want a new bathroom, they want the house renovated, they want an addition, they want new closets, they want new flooring, they want all sorts of new stuff. Right. We're going to deliver that to them, and they're going to be involved in the process, and they could do it vis-a-vis a pre-construction agreement. Right. It's, it's worked well. I mean, you know, and, and we have five-star review because customers are comfortable with us and we brought them through the process. You know, like you said, we build a schedule for them as well. You know, that's in the pre-construction, mm-hmm. you know, area. Yep. Build a schedule, have milestones so we, they don't know, we know when the payment should be come out. Correct. So there's no just coming out of the blue, hey, you owe me 10 grand today. Yeah, because a lot of these projects, it's a great point, because a lot of these projects are not bank draws. Yes. Right. So they're coming directly from cash. From the owner. From the owner. Right. And so it'd be nice to give them a heads up that you're going to hit them over the head for 25000 Right. Right. And so the way we do it is we bake in payment milestones mm-hmm. in the schedule. Right. So they get a baseline schedule when they contract and they know when they're supposed to be paying us. So that at least they could coordinate themselves and their affairs appropriately. Right. So they have the money freed up to pay us at that time. Mm-hmm. What that also does is it forces us to stay on schedule. Right. Right. Because they know they got to pay you in January. And then if they if you ask for payment in March, that's an admission of two months of delay. Right. Right. So unless you have excusable delay, you wrote them a notice of delay for a particular reason or they gave you a change order that added time. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, that's on you. Right. Right. And you're going to hear it. So it's another way that they can hold you accountable. Very important. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So the pre-construction agreement is like the gift that keeps on giving. It's the golden ticket. It really is. It is the golden ticket because it makes the customer happy. It makes us, the contractors, happy. We both know where we have to be. They know they have an accurate price. We know we've given them an accurate price because, you know, my intent is not to rip anyone off. Right. You know, and, and, and that's what the pre-construction, for me, it makes me feel good because I know I did my due diligence. I know exactly what my prices are. I know exactly the terms of this contract. I know exactly the time it has to be done. And I know what my budget is. Yep. And I stay on that like a hawk. And it makes, you know, and th- then I don't have to worry about, you know, thinking I'm ripping someone off. Right. And they, they don't have to worry about it either because they see the whole thing. You know? Sure. Yeah, they're a part of it, full transparency. And it makes for a far greater process, construction process. Mm-hmm. And then it also allows us to get more work on the books. We tell them, welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Yeah. Yeah. Because the pre-construction agreement, like I said, allows you to take the job off the street. Mm-hmm. It also allows you to get paid for all that upfront work, right? right. Because a pre-construction agreement is anywhere between 10 and 15% of what, an, what you think at that time an estimated window of construction would be. Right, of the budget number. Yeah, yeah so set. based on your experience mm-hmm. and being in this game for so long, you could say this is anywhere between 200 and 400,000, right. right? But we can dial this in and we should dial this in so you can get an accurate price. Right. Right, but based on the two hundred or four hundred thousand dollar window, we come up with a number, a ten or fifteen percent of that's probably somewhere in the middle of the two hundred and four hundred, maybe three hundred, mm-hmm. and then we get a thirty or forty thousand dollar deposit for pre construction, which is drawings and all of our time to get that done. Right. So if they even decide not to go with us for the construction, they have a permit ready set of drawings, right. they have the whole job spec'd out. 
They know exactly what the scope is, and they can go with another contractor if they feel necessary, but at least we got paid for our time and holding their hand through the process. Right. And that's, that's the beauty of it, right, is, is that you get paid for your time. Which we should. We should, exactly. For some reason, the world thinks that contractors aren't allowed to get paid and we're, we're not really running a business. No, yeah. And that's because the guys that show up at the front door don't look like people that run businesses. A lot of them look like they just left the gin mill. Yeah, or they just came off the beach. Yeah, exactly. And so because of that, it ruins the industry. Right. Right? It's unfortunate. And that's why we have to have such high altitudes. We have to, you know, take ourselves away from those people. No doubt. You know, those contractors, are, they don't know what they're doing, and, and, and they buy on price. I don't get these. They buy on price. Yeah, because they don't know any better. They don't know any better. They're not being educated on it. Yeah. The contractor is not going there educating their client and advocating for themselves. Mm -hmm. Most contractors aren't great communicators anyway. Right. Right, so then, you know, you can't get blood from a rock. You expect these guys to give an eloquent yeah. advocation for their position and educate them? I, I doubt, I, I don't yeah. think so. They, they definitely can't, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, the barrier of entry is them getting a license and then that's it. Mm -hmm. And many of these guys work under other people's licenses. And that's the big difference between residential and commercial and public works is that there's a massive barrier of entry. You got to be able to get a payment performance bond mm -hmm. to do public works. And then you have to have a specific track record with your company, certain revenues based on your taxes to even get a surety to say, I'll give you a $2 million bond so you can go bid a $2 million job, right? So then the sophistication level of the contractors are greater in that area and they play in that world and they don't play in this world, but there's so much opportunity in this world. And I think that homeowners deserve better than what's currently out there. Right. And, and one of the ways is a pre-construction agreement, and it's a 360 win for everybody. That's why I decided it was a great topic for us to talk about today. We talked about it tonight at Contractor School, and for the contractors that are watching this, I think it's gonna be very beneficial to them, right? Yeah, I think all contractors should use this. Yep. It just makes us all look like we have integrity. Instead of going out there and trying to just throw a dart at a dot board and then hitting them with a change order because you made such a terrible mistake. Exactly. Take the time. But I get it. Some contractors are not feasibly, financially stable to do something like this. Mm -hmm. Because even though you're collecting money up front, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. You know, you got an architect, you got the designer, you got your PMs involved. Right. You know, you're building schedules, you're doing procurement of items. You know, it's, it's a lot of work. You need people. You need people. You can't do this by yourself. And, and a lot of times, that's a difference in price. Mm -hmm. The cheapest guy doesn't have management. Right. The guy who's a little bit higher, he's got a project manager. Right. Right, because he has people, and he's got, he's got a greater overhead carry than the guy who doesn't have people, who owns the business and is swinging the hammer. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so in that scenario, typically, the guy who's lower priced doesn't have management. And so, you know, a homeowner is going to invest five to $700,000 in their home and in, in a remodel. Do they want to work with somebody who doesn't have any management? Right. This is your life, lifetime goal yeah. to have a house. And now you're going to give it to a single guy in a truck. Exactly. He's got three other jobs going on and then he yeah. doesn't come back to you for two weeks. Right. Because right. he can't manage it all. Right. He collects your money and then he goes tries to finish someone else so he can come and finish yours. Yeah, exactly. Stealing from Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. That happens constantly. All the time. Yeah, so, so the caveat is do a pre-construction agreement. You got to have a project manager. You need people to quarterback the pre-construction process. We have a pre-construction manager here. That's right. And, and to quarterback that process because once you start selling pre-cons, you're going to start selling a lot more of them. Right. Right. How many? We, I think we have 15 right now. 16 right now. We have 16 right now. Right. In right? pre-construction. In pre-construction process right. Right, now. right now. Between phase one and phase two of the pre-con. Pre right. right. So that requires people, mm -hmm. but that's a real business. Every great b business has what? People. People. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right? So that's yeah. another like chasm mm -hmm. and bridge that has to be crossed by contractors as well. Right. They got to recognize that this is a business in order to grow. You can't do it by yourself in a van. You have got to get people right. and, uh, and to, to start putting in place best practices is going to require people. So do your absolute best to start recruiting now so you can implement best practices and grow the business. Grow the business. It goes people first. Income second. Exactly. Right. It's not the other way around. Uh, once I do a couple of these jobs, I'll get some money, then I can get someone. That's going to lead to a day that never comes. Right. you got to get the person, put a butt in a chair, 
And then that pressure is going to force you to go out and get the work. You need the people first, and then the work comes second. You backfill the people with the work, not the other way around. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. So for anybody who's watching this, contractors, advice you could give them on a pre-construction agreement? Is um, if you can do it, do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and if you don't have people, find the people. Because once you start the pre-construction agreement, you'd be amazed how it's just going to flow. Right. Because people will trust you. You yeah. know, it's like... You know, they, they're a little hesitant, but once you do it and you understand how it works, you're more confident in it, and that presents to the customer, it you know reflects to the customer your confidence, and it just happens. It happens. I, I'll sell five a week. Yeah. And it just it just happens. Exactly. And if you get if you're sitting on five precons, you're trying to do all that work by yourself. Now you're in trouble. Big time. And if you're unorganized, yes, you're in big trouble. Big trouble. That's why we have all these systems in place. Yeah, you're nothing but your systems. Nothing. Not a system contractor. You're in. You're in chaos. And where there's chaos, is failure. Where there's control, there's success. Right. right? So ninety percent of all businesses fail because they were operating under the wrong system. Systems are everything. Everything. Yeah. So there are a few moving pieces and synergies that are required to do this successfully, mm -hmm. and we have implemented them here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. But for the for the contractors that are watching, uh, now's a good time to take it into consideration. Yeah, it's a good time. It's a good season. You know, we're in holidays. You know, no one's really want people in their home. It's a great time to understand this, learn the pre-con. And then get out there when it's hot. Get out there when it's hot. Yeah. Be prepared for it. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. I know this is going to benefit contractors. Yeah. So thanks for sitting down with me. Good to see you again. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks. Thank you.